corroborating evidence, the Meister footprint. We have the actual Meister footprint here. You can see it after this lecture. What is currently classified as the oldest fossil footprint was discovered in 1968 by engineer William Meister in Cambrian Rock near Antelope Springs, Utah. The footprint measures 10 and 1 4 inches in length, 3 and a half inches wide at the metatarsal base, and 3 inches wide at the heel. The print is actually a sandal print with wear on the outside of the heel and stitching depressions around the sides of the print. The rounded front of the sandal print shows a human manufacturer and human presence with the trilobites. Whoops! These trilobites are in Cambrian. Oh, got a real problem. Uh, geologist Billy Caldwell, are you here? Can you yell real loud or can you come up here, please, sir? This is the first geologist I met in Texas. I've met many since then. He's my friend. Hello, Dr. Billy. <laughs> um, you know all about the geologic column. There was a time you believed evolution, correct? Well, I didn't know anything different than what was taught. You're right. And so it's taught, and geologists are brainwashed that the Earth is so old and so forth because it fits evolution. You can't have evolution with a lot of, t a lot of time. And so things have to evolve, but they didn't evolve. There's no proof of it and no transition fossil has ever been found. And these Cambrian rocks that we're talking about, I've been on a lot of wells where we would drill down to the Cambrian and there's no life there in the granite that we hit. Then we come up to a sedimentary rock, suddenly life of all kind is in that sedimentary rock. Everything functionally mature, everything more or less that we have today. Do you so understand it suddenly, what- it suddenly appeared, suddenly was created. Do you understand what he just said? That's a sermon in a minute. Now, Dr. Caldwell, we, we talked about this Cretaceous limestone, a sign and age, this in this area of 110 million. We talked about the Permian. You're very, you could preach a sermon on that or give a lecture on that. That's a sign and age from 225 to 256 million. But now, Cambrian. Uh, here we have a human a series of nine human footprints in Cambrian. According to the standard evolutionary geologic interpretation, how old is Cambrian that you just described? Well, I was just trying to think as, as you mentioned, <laughs> but I've seen it ever listed everywhere from 400 million to 600 million, and even down to claiming into a billion. And so it's according to where it's published and so forth. But we're talking about something that's unbelievably ancient, and certainly uh, 400 million plus. Uh, unbelievably ancient according to evolutionary interpretation. Right. Now, now, I want to ask you one more question. You understand what he was just saying? To find a series of human footprints in Cambrian rock would do what to evolutionary theory? What would that do to evolutionary theory? Well, we destroy it. But we as creationists believe the Bible, and it said God created everything. And, but we're taught otherwise. I just finished a series yesterday on writing an article about this, and I'll send it to Dr. Ball as soon as I get it proved, and so forth. It would destroy it, but I must tell you, I was talking to the chief geologist, head of the geological department at TCU recently, and I said to him, we've never found a transition fossil, have we? Where one animal evolved to another. We've never even found one. And he said, I agree with you, but I still choose to believe what I believe. And so that's the way the world is today. It's academically correct and for your advantage, not losing your job and so forth, if you believe what they teach. <laughs> they would destroy it, but they still choose to believe what they believe. Wow, what, what a message. Give a hand to this man of courage, <laughs> courage and learning, courage and knowledge. So here we have the trilobites, Elrathia gingai trilobites, that identify that as uh, Cambrian. Now let's see if we can wrap this up. William E. Denemeyer of the United States Congress carried the issue to its ultimate conclusion in writing to this researcher, and I still have the communication. He wrote, this is a significant breakthrough with enormous implications for establishing the origin 
of mankind. Wow. Corroborating evidence, this week, you came at exactly the right time. In a few moments, you're going to see the flyby again. This week, uh, there's a fellow standing by the upper ledge. I want you to understand why we're so excited. This is the ledge we've been working in, and uh, it is slightly friable. That means it can be biodegraded more readily. If carbonic acid forms, it's very hard when we work in it, but carbonic acid just breaks it apart over a period of years and decades. Uh, so we're very excited about this layer. We found two trails of dinosaur tracks in this layer, and the prints that I've been describing to you have been found upstream and downstream, so we're wanting to find a complete trail nearby. That's my wife's husband standing there. You'd, uh, okay. And this is a dinosaur track that stepped on a 16-inch human footprint. And that was in March of 1982. Since then, all of this has been a slush area that we couldn't completely clear out. But Clay, who is present in this audience today, worked almost a solid week. Would you stand, Clay? Give him a hand of appreciation. Thank you so much. Clay laboriously cleaned all of that. Uh, that was a wilderness when you started a week ago. Uh, just a wilderness. And that was a sludge pit. And he cleared it out to the point where we could take all the water out of this and with sponges, he was, I was doing, other, uh, a director has to be everywhere and nowhere. It's the only thing that works. He can't just sit out at one place, chaos reigns. So I was way down here and he called and he said, come look at this. From this angle, he looked and he said, you can still see the toes and you can still see the toes. I'm so excited about that. And uh, here's that track. Here's the dinosaur track. And his hallux spur stepped right there and made a groove, so water ran through that crack. So that's been distorted, but there's the great toe. Second, second toe is a little longer than the great toe, and I mentioned earlier that's consistent. Third, fourth, little toe, all five of the toes. That makes my heart skip a beat. Because in these intervening years, I've had roughly 4,500 news interviews, had my own television program reporting this again and again, but the evolution say, it's impossible, impossible. But it's not impossible. There it is. And here's more. Uh, here is a scholar, school teacher. Her husband is head of all the volunteers who work for AIG. She's photographing this, and there's the great toe and the longer second toe and all the trench. And uh, so she's photographing this at the moment. And then here's the team that worked so hard this week. Now there's Dr. Aaron Judkins, who's worked with us so many years. That's the team on a single day, and basically the same team returned day after day after realizing it was slave camp. But they came back again and again and again. Now, director, where are you in that? I'm taking the picture, <laughs> so, I, so I, I'm not there. Uh, you can't, it's pretty hard to take a picture of all of that and hold it yourself. So would you give a hand? That's the team that made all of this possible. Would you give them a hand? <laughs> Some of you were actually there. And now here's the trail. Okay, Mark, you did it. You did it. At lunch, he hadn't reversed that, but it's reversed now. Here's the trail of, here's the dinosaur track, dinosaur track, dinosaur track, another and another. And here are the five toes. That is not an extension of the dinosaur track. His hallux is there. That's where the spur is. That's the end of his track. That's beyond. And the dinosaur obliterated almost about a third of that one, missed the track there, but pushed the, missed the human track, but pushed the track up in itself. And then 
kept going and kept going. And out here, they were 16 and a half inches apart from the human track and the dinosaur track. Here's the team at work. And that shows the labor. There's Clay right there, just continuing on and on. There's Dr. Willie Dye that I mentioned earlier today, his 13 doctorates. And that's the team just doing what is right. Documentation. Here's David Lyons documenting that very closely. And you saw the five toes because he did do that documentation. Here is an amazing trail adjacent to that one. That's a beautiful series of dinosaur tracks. Acrocanthus tracks, Acro Acrocanthosaurus. Participants, this is the school teacher, Susan Carter, I mentioned ago, a moment ago, Dr. Stephen Carter. He handles all the volunteers for the world's largest creation organization. This is one of the trail of dinosaur footprints on that upper hard, hard layer. Close up, all five toes. There's the great toe, the tip of the longer, second toe, third, fourth, little toe, one, two, three, four, right there, and the big toe right there. The hallux spur reaches back there and carved that depression, that crack caused that distortion, but how gratifying that is to see that after all these years.